Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you with another Let's Play episode of No More Futures. So, the last place we left off, we were talking with Nim about possibly uh, starting a streaming career and being the first synthetic ever on live stream to be playing games. Uh, you know, hopefully that would improve my public image. Well, Isaac's public image a bit. I think it probably would, but of course there'd be haters online, there's always haters everywhere, always people who are negative because they get off on it, but anyway guys, let's jump right back into it, please sit back and enjoy for the next 20 minutes and let's jump right in. Alarm Chan, you are up. Okay, let's do it. <clears throat> you forgot about Nim. Again, you're not good at managing conversations on two fronts it seems. Sorry, I, I just realized that it got pretty late all of a sudden. Did it? The dragon gives a brief look to his phone and then sighs at what he sees. Yep, it did all right. Sorry, I've been on my phone all this time, but I never thought to look at the time. It's all right, Nim. I didn't notice that either. And I have a computer in my head. Or something like that. So, what are we going to do? I don't know. I mean, I'd gladly have you over for dinner, but I'd feel pretty embarrassed serving you instant noodles with discount soy sauce. That's all you have? Yeah, I had to make quite a few sacrifices to get an apartment this nice. But hey, the Katatsu is definitely worth the investment, and I can live on cheap food for a while until I get my bearings. You certainly wouldn't mind eating whatever Nim can afford to share with you, even if it's just cup noodles. Dude, cup noodles are delicious. However, you feel as though the dragon deserves better than whatever he can scrounge at the supermarket's discount aisle for dinner. What if we went to a restaurant downtown instead? A, a restaurant? I don't think I could afford that. It's okay. I'll pay for you. I'd never invite you anywhere only to leave you to pay the bill. In spite of your promises, your friend remains unconvinced. I don't know. I'd still be pretty em still be pretty embarrassing, knowing I can only afford to eat out just because you're there. Nim, you don't. It's all right. I get paid next Sunday, so we can totally arrange something by then. You can still cover for me if you wish, but at least that way I won't feel like I'm taking advantage of you. You're quite unsure about the dragon's wishes yourself, and you can't fathom why he'd feel this way all of a sudden. But you try your best to respect his decision nonetheless. It might be because Nim's parents paid for everything. I don't know about his parents or anything, but maybe they spoiled him to the point where, like, he's trying to learn more self-reliance and he doesn't like when other people pay for him. I could definitely understand that. Are you sure you're going to make it through next week on cup noodles and the likes alone? Hey, my diet's not that bad. I just have very limited cash right now is all. I'll get by. Don't worry about that. Thanks for worrying, though, and for giving me a reason to go somewhere next Sunday. No problem. I guess I'll just head home then. You give Natalie the all-clear to call you a ride while you finish up your conversation with the Drake. So, what are you going to do once you get home? And not much. Probably head straight to bed and get ready for tomorrow. Why? I thought you didn't have any plans. Well, true, but I should still try to do everything I can to wake up early, just in case Mary wants to talk or anything like that. You only now realize that you never really told Nim much about your friends over at the company. Oh, sorry, I guess I never told you about her, huh? Well, Mary's kind of my... The director of, synth uh, the director of the Synthetic Project, huh, right? I've heard about her. Really? When? Come on, Isaac, she's all over the internet these days. She was literally on the New Herald just yesterday. Oh. Right, I remember now. Plus, it's not like she was a total nobody before it either. Apparently she's been working at Pandora Laboratories for several decades. Several decades? I didn't think she was that old. The wonders of modern cosmetic surgery, I guess. It's basically rich people magic. Is that why you never seem to grow up past third grade? Hey, that's a low blow. You chuckle at your little joke while the dragon regains his composure. Besides, I'm not that rich. My parents kind of are, and my sister's on her way as well. Meanwhile, I'm still stuck at a low-end job while feeding on cup noodles, remember? I know, I was joking. Still, that lady's probably on a whole other level. Have you seen her curriculum? She's practically a superhuman. Four degrees, seven masters, multiple groundbreaking books published? And that was before she was even 30. Your boss is practically a one-lady lab crew. Hmm. More like a one-lady company. Or half company, at least. Pretty much. How did you even get in contact with someone like that? I don't imagine you applied to become a synthetic anywhere. To be honest, I didn't. Before you can explain yourself, your friend quickly brushes you off as he shakes his head. Never mind, forget about that. It's about ten minutes or something, and I'm still here wasting your time. Oh, let's go back. I should probably let you leave by now. 
You're not wasting my time, Nim. Though it is true that I did already call a mover a while ago. Really? When did you find the time to do that? Again, you hesitate to tell him about your handler for some reason. It's complicated. Well, I'm sure we can just catch up on all this stuff the next time we see each other. Right! I'll try to get a hold of Mary for that stream offer by then as well. And that thing with Daphne as well. Awesome! I can't thank you enough, Isaac. You don't have to, no. You don't have to, Nim. Take care, alright? Of course! Here, let me accompany you to the door. As you cross the threshold of the tiny dragon's apartment, you turn around to see him waving at you happily from the living room. See you soon, Isaac! You too, Nim. Hit me up whenever you have time. You know I am lonely without you. You're not sure whether you're meant to laugh or be embarrassed at that comment, so you end up doing both as you begin to head upstairs. <laughs> as your heart yet lingers in the Drake's joyous and colorful bedroom, you cast one final goodbye in its direction before beginning the slow ascent to street level. As you step outside, you're once again greeted by the cold breeze that stalks this rural town at night. The road is practically full of cars heading back home after a long work shift, while the sidewalks are occupied by adults and teenagers alike who are either heading back to their apartments or leaving for the night. In spite of how busy your surroundings seem to be, your driver appears to be nowhere in sight. Seeing as though you appear to have some time to yourselves, you decide to resume your earlier conversation with your handler. Hey, Nats? You hear the Labrador perk up from under her desk, shuffling some papers around as she does so. Yes? What's up? What was it you wanted to tell me about? We're on our own now, so you might as well get that out of the way. What was it? Oh, that! Sorry, I almost slipped my mind. Are you sure you want me to tell you right now? I thought that maybe you wanted to wait for the car to arrive. It's alright. It doesn't really make a difference either way, does it? Besides, it's not like I have a whole lot to do while I wait. Your friend takes some time to gather her thoughts, but ultimately she decides to answer your query. I see. Well, here's what's up. You remember what happened this morning, don't you, with that FBI agent? You briefly shudder as you recall that dreadful time alongside that twisted canine fellow. Yeah, I remember. Did something happen with him? Uh, did he come back to my place while I was away or something? Not really, it's... Look, do you remember what happened after he left? After he left? Quite a lot happened after that, truth be told, though you assume your, ham your helper only wants you to mention what happened directly following that heated exchange. Well, Jasper ordered Mary to blast the whole building with an EMP, wanted to fry all the equipment they planted in my house or something. Yeah, Mary told me that what happened earlier. Mr. Martin previously sent in a team to get your place fixed up and remove all extraneous electronics from the premises. I know that. I was there when that happened, remember? You hear the Labrador lovely smack her forehead as she replies to your sarcastic quip. Oh, right, sorry, I've been a klutz all day, huh? Well, Mary got the results of their search a while back, so she wanted me to relay the info to you as soon as possible. I see. Well, what is it? Well, they... they didn't find any hidden spying equipment in your apartment. They... they didn't? Nope. No cameras, no wires, no nothing. It's possible that they tampered with your PC, but if everything fried, it's impossible to tell. Natalie's revelation is quite stunning, to say the least. You're lost for words as you try to wrap your head around this new piece of information. That makes no sense. Why approach me in my apartment, then? What did they have to gain from that whole exchange other than getting me pissed off? Nobody knows. All we can say for certain is that your apartment is as clean as can be. Yeah, because they planted that seed of doubt in Isaac's mind. Though you're still entirely clueless as to, those, as to those agents' true goals and motivations behind their actions, you're certain of one thing at least. That EMP blast was entirely pointless, and so was the wanton destruction it caused to your friend's apartment. If before you felt awful for causing trouble to the entire complex, now you feel even worse knowing the futility of that endeavor. You probably shouldn't feel this way, you reason. You didn't give the order, nor was it you who caused the situation in the first place. In spite of that, however... They also installed some additional security measures, so you should be able to sleep without fear of those jerks sneaking back in your room tonight. Now these words take you completely by surprise as they restore you from your trance. Wait, what kind of security measures are we talking about again? Oh, you know, the usual, or something like that. Mary wasn't very specific with the details. Something about the dog's tone doesn't strike you as particularly convincing. Well, as long as the door doesn't explode every time I bring someone else over to my place, I guess I don't mind a little extra protection. Noted. I'll tell Mary to disable that feature later, then. Well, wait, are you, you're joking, right? Um, do you not 
want her to remove it then? That's not what I said, and you know it. You're almost certain that the Labrador, who's now losing herself in hysterics, wasn't quite being serious with you just now. However, this comically exaggerated exchange was exactly what you needed to forget about your self-loathing thoughts, if only for a moment. You're not quite sure of whether she was aware of those when she began this lighthearted banter or not, but you're thankful for her saving input nonetheless. Oh, there's your mover! Right on cue, you notice a large black car moving uncharacteristically steadily towards you. If its speed wasn't a telltale sign enough, the company plate on the front makes it clear that this is your ride home. Strangely, you see the car park a little ways off from you where you're currently standing, almost as if trying to avoid you. Uh, you sure that's my driver? I'm checking the plate. Yep, that's the one. Alright then, uh, here goes nothing. You make a few tentative steps towards the black car, still feeling a little uncertain. However, before you can even reach the midway point between the two, between you two, it suddenly gets off the sidewalk and starts driving down the road even faster than the surrounding speed demons. What? What just happened? You think you have a pretty good idea. You didn't tell them a synthetic was going to be the passenger, did you? No, but... The driver probably didn't realize that either. As soon as they figured out I was going to be on board with them, they panicked. That jerk, the nerve of that guy! Natalie sounds really upset upon hearing your theories, more so than she's ever been before. I'm leaving the worst review ever on their page. Some help they were. You know what? I'm going to talk to a friend of mine from the company, see if they can't do anything about... Don't. Your fiesel comes across so sternly that even the Labrador is taken aback. Isaac? It's fine. I was planning on heading home on foot anyway. I've got a good, I've had a good day so far. Let's not end it on a sour note just because of one idiot. It's a flimsy excuse, even you realize that. Surely, so does your canine assistant. And yet, she seems willing to believe it, at least for the time being. Alright, if you say so. Thanks, Nats. Without sharing another word, you begin the long trek to your solitary apartment complex after giving one last look to Nim's own. It's been such a long day, and so much has happened since you first woke up. You have quite a lot to think about, both in the good and the bad. Government agencies, conspiracies, prejudiced assholes of all kinds, but also tender moments alongside your friends and rediscovered family. <laughs> As you let yourself disappear in the maze of roads before you, you wonder what could possibly happen in the future to, to, top, off, to top this all off. I wonder. You awaken in your bedroom once again, after who knows how long, sitting on the strange contraption you now call a bed. Your memories of last night are fairly blurry. You recall your uneventful trip from Nim's condo to your own, your muffled steps down the stairs as you reached your floor, you bidding your, brand, your friend goodbye for the night. Your umpteenth attempt at crying yourself to sleep on the couch. Yesterday was more eventful than you could have ever imagined. A roller coaster of emotions that had you gripping the edge of your seat all the way through. Though it was full of pleasant moments alongside your friends and family, it was also full of reminders that you're now more lonely and despised than ever. Definitely not a nice thought to wake up to, all things considered. You've half a mind to go right back to sleep and you notice a strange feeling, or rather a strange thought, bugging you the wrong way. Is this... a message? Hmm. Hey there, kiddo. Call me whenever you wake up, alright? I've got big plans for today I want to discuss with you. The message appears to have been sent by Mary at 8 a.m., which was two hours ago already. It seems like Natalie spoke the truth when she said she's made your notifications a lot less intrusive. You didn't even notice she'd received a message, busy as you were dreaming about who knows what. It seems like Pandora, or at the very least your friends in the science division, aren't lying when they say they care about you. By the way, what could Mary want from me on a weekend? As curiosity gets the best of you, you decide to call her back while you head to the living room. For once untouched by your routine feelings of hunger and thirst, I bet it's that whole hearing with the council thing. Yep, I didn't forget about that. The Siamese's phone is already ringing by the time you sit down on your couch. Turns out that Mary's number, alongside many other many others from the company, had already been pre-registered in your database in case you ever needed it. All you needed to find it was applying, applying what Natalie taught you two days earlier. Among your contacts, there are numerous scientists you don't recall talking to, some engineers you never had a chance to meet, and, of course, plenty of lawyers. It seems like Jasper's number is on the list, though. Probably for, for the better. You cannot imagine a situation where you want to... Oh! Hey, sleepyhead. Finally got that message, haven't you? You can't even finish your thought before Mary picks up the phone, her voice ever cheerful even on an early weekend morning. Hey, everything alright? Of course! Why do you ask? You don't usually send messages this early in the morning, if anything, I do. Ha! Don't worry, I'm alright. 
I was just wondering if you had any plans for the rest of the day. You're a little surprised by her sudden request. Uh, not really, no. Why? Oh, you know, I thought it'd be cool to invite you over to the labs and hang out for a while. Hang out for a while? Oh, hold on, you're at the labs? Don't tell me you work on weekends as well. The cat cannot help but laugh at your apprehensive remark. Yeah, but don't worry. Nobody's forcing me. When I'm doing my own thing instead of filing another dumb report for Jasper, I find work and studying rather pleasant. Well, that's certainly a relief, if only a little uncommon. Though you can't say you're surprised, given that Natalie said something along those lines yesterday as well. But I don't have a lot to do today either way, and it's been a while since we last chatted for chatting's sake. I was wondering whether you'd be down for some fun time together. No strings attached. Um, well, what exactly is your definition of fun times together? Oh, don't sound so scared. Just your regular chat between friends, maybe in the midst of a quick tour around the place. Didn't you already show me around the building sometime after I first woke up? Yet more chuckling from the scientist's side of the call. Oh, that little snippet of my workplace could hardly be considered a tour. After all, I didn't even get to show you our actual synthetic laboratories. I thought you might be interested in seeing the environment where we came up with, studied, and experimented with the idea of synthetics. I figured it'd help clear some of the doubts in your head about the project and yourself. Though you're a little uncertain about the idea of heading back to the new to new relay so soon, especially after reconnecting with Nim and George again after so long, you have to admit that the cat does make a valid proposal. After all, the nonsense Bradbury tried to put in your head yesterday and the doubts and fears you've faced ever since, maybe a brief lesson on synthetics is exactly what you need to regain your composure. Plus, Mary still owes you a ton of answers regarding Bradbury, his bodyguard synthetic, and the whole and the role the FBI plays in all this mess you got yourself into. And besides, small talk with Mary is oftentimes pleasant just by itself. Deal. When would you like when would you like me there? Whenever you wish. This isn't a formal invite or anything of the sort, so you can take your time if you have other things to do. I was thinking we could continue our conversation over lunch, though, so maybe we could meet up in the next two hours or so? Sounds good to me. I'll make sure I don't have anything else I need to take care of first. Then I'll get on a train to New Relay and make my way to the labs. The Siamese sounds very pleased with your eagerness. You can't be too sure because you can't see her, see her in the face, but you're fairly certain that she's smiling on the other side of the call right now. All right, then. I'll see you later. Be sure to call, f be sure to call for me when you're at the lobby. I'll come and grab you as soon as I'm free. Roger that. I'll see you soon. And with that, the call is over just as quickly as it started. You take a deep, long breath. You weren't quite expecting things to turn out this way, but you can't say you're too displeased with your new plans for the day, either. Though, you were looking forward to chatting with your cousin and your old friend again, and spending the morning at the labs with Mary doesn't seem like a waste of your time. In fact, it could prove quite beneficial. Besides, you can just hit them up in the afternoon once you get back. There's no reason to plan anything with them so early on in the day. Feeling quite happy with your present arrangements, you make your way out of, the, out of your apartment and get ready to begin your long journey to the labs. As you exit your apartment, you realize you still haven't heard from your dutiful handler. You're not sure whether Natalie's sleeping right now or is hard at work at the labs like her superior, but you find it strange that she didn't tell you which one it'd be earlier. Then again, if she didn't, it's probably because she's taking the day off like a reasonable person and didn't expect you to second guess. You could call Mary again and ask, just to be safe, but in the end, it's you to decide it. In the end, it's in the, but in the end, you decide to take it easy and simply head to Pandora's HQ like you planned. You make your way across the hallway, then hop on the elevator. You're still a little worried it might freak out like the other day and take an eternity to deliver you to the lobby. But you trust that Jasper's team took care of that problem as well, and, uh, that, that problem well enough in, in your absence yesterday. The elevator does indeed feel much faster as it travels up a floor. Then another... It suddenly slows down, much to your surprise. Oh, hello there. The door opens, revealing a familiar visage staring at you from the hallway. She almost doesn't seem to notice you until she's fully stepped inside, and when she does... Isaac? She seems a little surprised to see you there, though it's probably due to her grogginess. She doesn't seem to ha she doesn't appear to have slept all that well last night. Hey Daphne, how are you, how are you doing? Oh, don't get me started. Worst fucking night of my life. Dear lord, what happened? Came back home from overtime to find out the entire apartment had been zapped by something while I was away. Whole building got wrecked, apparently. It was a disaster. Oh, she's referring to that. You'd almost forgotten about that EMP Mary unleashed on the whole building yesterday. 
Again, you cannot help but feel a little responsible over what happened, and the human immediately notices your expression of guilt. You knew about it? Yeah, the whole building was hit by an EMP that fried all the electronics in the building. Put my whole apartment out of commission, too. Luckily, Pandora, of all corporations, stepped in to fix that mess. I think they had everything repaired or replaced by night. Sorry about that, by the way. I thought I'd tell you back at the bar, but you left before I could mention it. I see. The human looks a little dejected all of a sudden, as if remorseful over something. But that doesn't. But that feeling doesn't last long. Either way, I'm glad that you and Apollo got out of it, of it unscathed, at least. Electronics can be replaced, but people, not so much. You weren't expecting Daphne to worry about you like that, but you smile at her unexpected kindness, nonetheless. All right. There we go, guys. That has been a new episode of No More Future. Please, guys, uh, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. And like always, I love you all, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!